So this is about two Californians who have taken Hermes to court because they claim our money wasn't good enough. But a lot of these designer brands, when a new collection comes out, will send a PDF round on WhatsApp, let's say, to their top customers. Top customers will be invited to buy items from that new collection before they even get released. But I feel like there is um, a potential snobbery around being offered a bag and having your name on the system versus having to go and buy it pre-loved. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I wanna start by thanking a number of you for the requests for this video. We are gonna be talking about the Hermes lawsuit that's happening at the moment in the state of California in the US. If you are not aware of what's going on, I'm gonna bring you up to speed. I'm gonna to talk to you about what's happening over there. I'm gonna talk about what I think this could mean, certainly in the States, in terms of being able to acquire a Birkin or a Kelly, what I think about it. Then I'm gonna talk about some other brands, which actually, they do the same thing. It's just a non-spoken rule, I think, with all of these brands, these kind of quota items. But we're gonna talk about all of it. So to start, I just want to thank Amy on Patreon. That Cho on IG, I hope I've said that right, Cho or Sho, um, Linda on email, Elena on email, and also I, I couldn't find everyone's comments, but I've had a number, number of you in the comments on YouTube also asking for this video. So thank you to all of you who requested it and to those of you who also sent me links uh, to where I could go and find information. So here's the background. Here's what we're gonna be discussing today. Please have your say in the comments below because I would love to read and see what your thoughts are on this, particularly if you're an Hermes customer. How do you feel about this? If you're an Hermes customer and you're in that higher echelon, you've been offered bags, you continually get offered bags. How do you feel about this whole thing? I would love to get your thoughts. So this is super interesting. This is Birkin bait at its absolute finest. In the last week, two Hermes customers in California filed a lawsuit against Hermes in the Federal District Court of Northern California. They are alleging a couple of different things. So in the States, particularly as I understand it in the state of California, again, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't live in the States obviously, so I'm not 100% sure on the laws there, but there is a law to do with antitrust which is to do with the tying of sales. So you have to buy one thing in order to potentially buy another. That is something that, as I understand it, is illegal. The other thing that they are also claiming is unfair competition violations. So as a result of only allowing customers with a sufficient purchase history to buy its famous bags, they're claiming that this practice is actually unlawful. Is it? I mean, it does feel a little bit, um, shady um it does feel it just uh, to me it feels like an underhand way of getting more money out of us without even promising us the bag it's just like you need to keep spending potentially thousands potentially hundreds of thousands there's still no guarantee you're going to get anything i've even heard of a lot of you telling me that you haven't had to buy lots of things because you've had a close relationship with uh, like a salesperson and they've been able to get you in the back door. So to me, it goes to show that with all of these brands, but maybe particularly with Hermes and the way the game works, it does feel a little bit, um, it, it just feels shady to me. They are reeling us in and there is no guarantee. It, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me. And I've always spoken about the game and said that although there are, there's the constants that I really want, which now I know is not quota, even when it was, I was never prepared to play the game um, to get one of those bags. So these two shoppers were required to buy ancillary products. So ancillary products are things like ready to wear, homewares, so plates, dishes, tableware, um, as well as accessories, which could include costume jewelry, shoes, silk scarves, all of that sort of, with the exception of ready to wear, I feel, I feel as though a lot of these kind of things are what I call kind of luxury tat. They're, they're things that if you only want one scarf, if you only want one bracelet, if you only want one pair of shoes, perfect. But if you're having to buy 
quantities of this stuff and you don't really want it to me that becomes tat to me that becomes a bunch of things you're going to have at home and you're like what do i do with like a thousand twilly scarves i only really want one or two and now i've got loads and i still don't have any guarantee of my bag so these two customers were required to buy such items and although they're talking about the birkin bag they they have said as a lot of us know that the same rules apply to the kelly so if you want to get a kelly bag the same thing goes you've got to get in there you've got to build up a relationship you've got to buy 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 all of those little bits and bobs and trinkets and things you don't need in order to qualify potentially to even be offered one of these bags they also point out the fact that in most places these top level bags these halo level bags they're not on display in the stores although i have actually seen them myself but i don't believe that you can just go and buy them they're there for display purposes and very often some of the more exotic pieces top customers don't even get to see it in the store they're taken into a private room so that nobody else can see it and it kind of makes the whole um, experience feel a lot more exclusive so I was interested to see who are these two Californians that have brought this and I've found some information and again if any of you know different please correct me because I am going on information that I've typed up um, that I found online but it says here that Tina Cavallari claims to have spent tens of thousands of dollars at an Hermes boutique but when she requested a second bag in December 2022 so it sounds like she's already got one she was told the speciality bags are going to clients who have been consistent in supporting our business she understand that she understood that to mean that she needed to purchase more ancillary items also plaintiff mark glenoga also alleges that he was counseled by the defendant so by hermes one of their sales associates to purchase ancillary products so that he could be offered a birkin um as for the legal claim of tying plaintiff plaintiff's claim the tying product the birkin handbags is separate and distinct from the tied products the ancillary products required to be purchased by consumers plaintiffs have alternative options for the ancillary products but would and would prefer to choose among them independently from their decision to purchase a birkin bag so the way i interpret this is we all know the game we all know how it works but when you are coerced into buying a set of dinner plates when actually you don't want them but that's the direction that you're being sort of pushed into that again is another problem where and i actually saw this i wish i screenshot this i saw this on instagram where someone had posted up their whatsapp conversation it blanked out the names etc but the whatsapp conversation from the sales associate was saying to them you need to buy this set of plates and there was a link to the plates and this the customer on several screenshots later was like I don't need any more plates I've literally got like six sets of these plates I don't need any more and so that again goes to show something for me that um the, yeah maybe I, I don't know I'm not a, I'm not a big Hermes customer I own like a trinket dish and a bracelet um, but maybe this is the case that you're not just left to your own devices to buy what you want but you are also encouraged to buy certain things the lawsuit said that it was seeking class action status for thousands of US consumers who have bought Hermes goods or were asked to buy them in order to purchase a Birkin Hermes operates about 43 stores in the US, including eight in California. The plaintiffs are seeking unspecified monetary damages and a court order barring Hermes's allegedly anti-competitive practices. Hermes has been approached for comment and I don't think they've said anything. But again, what could this mean? If these two people win, what does this mean? Not just for them, compensation, potential compensation, what does it mean for everyone else? Will other countries around the world follow? Will there be other people around the world? Are there laws in place in certain countries that, that some of us go, actually, do you know what? They're breaking that law. I can take them to court. Let's get a few customers together. We've got it. But also, what does that mean if they win for other customers in the States? Does that open the door to people being able to claim compensation for all of the bits and pieces they've been encouraged to buy that they probably didn't want before i talk about what i think 
and other brands that actually do exactly the same thing and no one's talking about them in great detail. But why is the Birkin bag so special? Well, the Birkin bag, and I'm gonna go over this quickly because I know that a lot of you probably already know, but if you're watching this video and if you're relatively new to the brand, you might be thinking, do you know what? What is making that bag so special in the first place? I like the Birkin in the 25 size. I don't particularly love it in the larger sizes. Don't love it enough to go and buy it. Not that I can, because obviously you need to be offered it. Um, I really like the Constance, that's the bag for me. Um, but here's, here's what makes it special. So back in 1981, it's alleged that Jane Birkin, who was an actress and singer, she actually passed away, I think, when she was about 76. She was sat on a plane from Paris to London next to the chief executive of Hermes. And they were having a conversation and she was talking about how difficult it is for her to find a bag that suits her needs because at the time she had two young children and she needed something that carried all of her goods including bits and pieces for the kids and she couldn't find anything. The chief executive went away and worked on this and in 1984, so a few years later, 1984, the Birkin bag was released. So the bag was named after Jane Birkin. And from there, it's become an iconic fashion piece. It's become a status symbol. If you see it, you know the person that's got it. They're doing all right in life. And it's become a major investment piece. It's become something that if you buy it, your money, that you, the, the money that you dropped on it is safe. If not, it's increasing year on year as the price of the bags go up as the scarcity of them goes up and I, I do feel as well with Hermes and I don't know how you feel about this and I'm going to talk about another brand in a second where this is the same in my opinion but I feel like there is um, a potential snobbery around being offered a bag and having your name on the system versus having to go and buy it pre-loved because you can't get access to it you can't get allocation and that's something else that I kind of, I, I would love to get your thoughts on that. How do you feel if you're an Hermes customer, if you've bought pre-loved? How do you feel about the whole thing? Do you feel as though if you are given the green light from Hermes themselves and you get your bag, it feels more prestigious than if you've had to go and buy it pre-loved and, and paid overs, paid through the nose for it? Because it's pre-loved. So let's talk about some of the other brands that are that are actually doing this. I'm going to start with, do I want to name these brands? Okay, the first brand I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to name, but they're an, an automotive, a car brand. And they do exactly the same thing. In fact, um, I'm really into this car brand. It's not, it, what they do, it is, it's, it is what it is. So basically, to get the, to get the hero products, the, the top cars, the, the, the investment cars, the cars you buy and they just uh, immediately, as soon as you've driven them off the forecourt, they're worth more. People will actually pay you more than what you just bought for it because they can't get it. To get allocation, to be able to have the dealership say to you, do you know what? You've been a good customer. You've bought loads of stuff off us. We're gonna give you allocation on this car. It then lets you go and spec the car, the color you want, the wheels you want, the interior, everything. You build the car to you. It's the same as Hermes. If you have to go and buy pre, if you have to go and buy a used car, a used version, it's because you didn't get allocation. And to be given allocation is like to be, it, it's, the, it's the top of the top. It's the thing that everyone wants. If you're into this particular car, everyone wants allocation because it means you're up there. Whereas if you've had to buy it secondhand, you're down there because you couldn't get allocation. And in order to get allocation, there are loads of unspoken rules about it. But a lot of the time, you've got to buy a load of their cars in order to even qualify. Now, there is another fashion brand that I've noticed also do something similar. And again, I, I won't name them. Maybe I should. No, <laughs> I'm not going to name them. But there, and there, there are a number that do this. This is not particular to one brand. But a lot of these designer brands, when a new collection comes out, will send a PDF round on WhatsApp, let's say, to their top customers. Top customers will be invited to buy items from that new collection before they even get released. So you put down a deposit 
and it means that the day it gets released, you've already got your item. You don't have to go and store and fight for it. Your item is already secured. And this tends to happen particularly with a lot of the popular bags. Um, so for example, some of you might have noticed that, do you remember the, the gold Chanel bag with the little star uh, coin purse hanging off it that came out not so long ago? That was just impossible to get because top people were offered it first and any that were left on the shelf because a top customer rejected it, didn't want it, didn't fancy it, they got snapped up or offered to the next customer down the list. Again, although it's not a case of you have to buy, buy, buy with those brands in order to be given the top bags, it still shows preferential treatment to those who spend big or those who have a very close relationship with a salesperson. Um, and so, in my mind, Hermes aren't alone. I think what's making Hermes different is that Hermes require you to go and buy a load of stuff in order to potentially qualify. Whereas with some of these other brands, they don't necessarily require you to go and buy a load of stuff in order to qualify for a bag, but in order to qualify for a bag, you need to be a top customer, whether that's because you really get on with your essay or whether it's actually because you're a big spender. One way or another, that are in luxury, that's how it goes. So these are my thoughts, and I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they win the court case on this because they do have grounds. From what I've read up, they do actually have grounds. I am really interested to see where this goes to. I will do a follow-up video once there is actually a result that's come from this. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think this is gonna mean? If they win, this could be huge. What do you think this is gonna mean for customers, for customers globally, for the brand? Let me know what you think. Will it either make the Birkin even more scarce, so the practice will still go on, one way or another, and they'll just make less Birkins to make them even more scarce. Or not, because if I was Hermes, I'd go, all right then, you're not gonna let me do it? I'll just make even less Birkins, I'll make like two a year, and whoever gets them gets them, but they're gonna be even rarer, potentially, to keep that exclusivity, because if anyone can walk in and get one, does the exclusivity start to go? I don't know. It's an interesting topic. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.